Hey guys, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. Hope you are doing great today. In this video, I'm gonna go over all of the electrical for the crypto mining shed. And that includes everything inside and out, inside the house, um, everything at the wall, all of the trenching that we had to do to bring everything up into the shed. And we'll take a quick stroll inside. So I'll cover everything inside the panel. I recently did some electrical work and we opened all this up. We actually brought all of the rigs down and installed a new device in there, which I'll talk about in another video, but I'll go through all of that, everything inside the panel. I'll go through all of the outlets, everything we've got here in the shed. And just to get started, I'll tell you, I've mentioned this in videos before, we've got a total of 200 amps for the shed for all of the rigs and right now we're at 61 GPUs and at the 80% rule for our 200 amps that puts us at about 160 amps that are usable. So at 61 GPUs we're a little bit over 5,000 watts and I'll give you a shot of that here in just a minute. I've got a little bit of information that I've collected through a couple of different sources. But first, to start this video, I wanna go inside. I think it's best to start out with where we began, which is with the initial breaker box that we had in the garage. And I'll walk you through what I was dealing with and then how we did all of this, everything here, and how we got to where we are today. All right, so on the way to the garage, I thought this would be a good spot to stop real quick and for those of you that have been around for a while and watched the channel since the beginning, or at least within the first year of the channel, this was the original studio, which I operated out of. I had my desk over here, everything, all of the building was done in this room. Everything was here. And my rigs actually were in the hanging shelving unit, which was sitting on this wall that's empty right now. And I mentioned that because this is probably a similar situation to what many of you encounter when you first start mining. You've got a bedroom or a space, an office of some kind where you can actually put something and you can start building. And the first thing you notice when you build in an area like this is the heat. It starts to build up, the room starts to get hot, especially during the summertime. And one of the issues I was dealing with when I was trying to decide how I wanted to build out this room was the electrical and the fact that I am on a slab here in this house. My previous house had a crawl space, this one does not. So I'm on a slab, I was very limited in what I could do under the floor here, actually nothing at all. And then up above here, there's a second floor. So I really, I've had an electrician come in and look around and there was not a whole lot I could really do in this room. I mean, I talked about doing something like what mining chamber did and add an exhaust fan above the door here. I, I explored all of that stuff and I just couldn't really get it to work. And the kicker was the electrical. And all of these outlets that are in this room here are on a breaker, which is a 15 amp circuit breaker. And this is all on 110. So really to be safe, I couldn't take any rig in here above about 1200 watts. And I did, I think I did push 12, 1300 watts maybe a couple times for a while, but then I had to start moving out and putting rigs in other rooms. And it just wasn't really working for me. So the next thing I did was we upgraded the water heater and went to a tankless system. And I've talked about that on the garage crypto mining build that I did here on the channel. I'll put a link to that in the show notes if you wanna see where we were at that point in time. And that was a great intermediary step was garage mining. But even then during the summertime, the garage got pretty hot. So let me take you out there and we'll talk about growing out of this room. I'll show you where we went to the garage and I'll give you a look at the panel and we'll go from there. All right, so here we are back in the garage and right here along this wall actually was where I had my initial shelving unit, the same wire shelving unit that's out in the crypto mining shed now, was just sitting on this wall right here. And what I had done, I mentioned to you that we removed this water heater right here, the hot water heater that was on this 30 amp breaker. 
And so what I decided to do was I had the electrician install a outlet here in the garage so that I could put a PDU in, which was sent over from Nerd Gears. And I was able to run 30 amps here in the garage. And this was really great. It was a great intermediary step for me because I was able to get more rigs on one circuit and on 220. So not only did the 30 amps give me additional capacity over the 15 amps that I had in the office or in the studio, but I also was on 220 now, which is more efficient and allows me to add a little bit more capacity from a rig standpoint here in the garage. Now, the other thing I want to point out, uh, an issue that I had was when this house was built, unfortunately, I will never do this again. I've built three houses now and I was just so busy. We had a new baby at the time that I did not really oversee what they were doing here at the panel. And you can see this is completely loaded up. So day one, I was completely loaded and the total capacity for the house was only 150 amps, which I did not realize that that was the case at the time. And I would have made sure it was 200 or maybe even I had upgraded higher to that in the very beginning. But this is what we were dealing with. So I had a fully loaded breaker panel. The only reason I was able to put any rigs here in the garage was because we freed up the space from this wa hot water heater here and put in a tankless system, which uses uh, a lot less electricity and went on to one of the 110 circuits. So from that point, I ran into a lot of issues trying to take the next step. I, want, I knew I wanted to build the crypto mining shed in the backyard. I had saved up, I'll do a whole video on the mining shed itself, the ROI, everything. But I'll tell you right now, what I had done is I had saved up a couple thousand dollars worth of gift card points from my bank that I could spend at Lowe's. So I was able to buy my, I think it was about $2,200 for that shed basically for free and and i know i actually used reward points and all that but i didn't take money out of my checking account to spend on it it was from those reward points i got gift cards and i bought that mining shed well that being said i needed to get electrical out there and for several months i had a real problem with multiple electricians coming out to try to do any upgrades to this panel and unfortunately over this garage there's not a lot of options that are available the panel itself the ingress from the outside is all the way on the other side of the house so it was going to be a significant amount of money just to bring in a new wire to this panel so i will show you what we did on the outside and again i'm on a slab as well so i couldn't bring anything underneath through a crawl space so let's go outside this was call it step two in the mining journey was migration out to the garage and i'll show you what we did on the outside of the house to get to step three into the mining shed so as i'm walking by i'll just go ahead and show you this this is the transformer that sits in the front yard here and it sits in the corner of my lot which ended up being a lucky break because when i had the engineer from the electrical company come out right here the corner of my house is the ingress for the electrical and all of the utilities so it made it a very short run from here for them to do the electrical upgrade out to the transformer right here. The upgrade from the utility, they charged me $500 to come out here and trench all of this. They brought a little trenching machine out, actually a big trenching machine out, a scooper, and scooped all of the dirt out here. It's a pretty significant hole and did the upgrade. So that was $500. And then this new panel right here, you can see this is an oversized panel that you would see on like a retail space on the side of the building. This was installed by the electrician that I hired. And I'll go over all of the costs from the electrician. One of the main suggestions I would have is to get multiple quotes. And I know that sounds obvious, but even if you have a friend or someone you've worked with before that's an electrician, get multiple quotes. That way you can get an idea of the range, the low, the medium, the high numbers that people are throwing out there. And also you'll just get different ideas on how to accomplish what you're trying to do from different electricians. Well, let me open this up for you real quick. All right, so without taking a look in here, because it's actually illegal for me to open up this next part, uh, at least where I live, uh, you can see right here, we've got two master breakers right here. We've got the 150 right here for the house and the 200 for the shed. 
And one of the issues that I had was the bus bar for this could not be upgraded to 400 amps. So I had to get an electrician that was able to find a unit with a separate bus bar that could be run to the shed on a separate 200 amp circuit. So that's how this is set up right now. There's a completely separate bus bar under here that's coming down into here that gives me a master cutoff for the shed itself. Now from here to get out to the shed, all of this had to be trenched out here through the ground up over to the shed that you see right there. And I got a quote for that. The lowest quote I got was about $350 and the highest quote was $700. And if crypto was earning what it is today, I would have paid someone to do it. But at the time, ROI was really, really important. And $350, that was another GPU that I could that I could pick up. So I ended up doing this trenching myself and it was about 70 feet out to the shed. And I'll tell you, that was, uh, that was difficult. That was some work. And at the same time, what I did, you can see right here, I actually added 200 foot ethernet cables, cat six cables that go down and they sit a little bit off of the electrical that's run underground here. And if you saw when I finished up the shed, the throughput is actually screaming fast. There's no interference or anything like that. One of the lessons I learned was right here at this final turn, I had made three 90s. So right here at this final turn, I had to redig this and put another pull box right here to be able to pull the ethernet from the shed, which had already made two 90s coming out of the shed down to here. I had to add another pull box to pull up through here and then run it up there, which then goes into the house to the ISP. So yeah, so let's, uh, let's take a look at from this point, the 200 amps that's coming out here to the shed and we'll cover that next. So right here, all of this was trenched out and this is the ingress to the shed. And this, I mentioned, I trenched all of that with my son. All the way there was about 70 feet at 36 inch depth. So 36 inches was required by code from the county. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start digging down and you've got that far to go, it's not easy. I highly recommend if you do it yourself, rent a machine or buy a trenching tool. All right, so here we are inside, and if you can see out the window, this is where everything got trenched in. And right here is the ingress into the shed. Got a little hole there. That's for the ethernet cables that are coming in. And then up here is the box. And I will give you a look at that. I've got all of the miners up right now in production and talk through that as we go along here. But inside the shed, you'll see these what we called convenience outlets. These are 110 volt, and I've got four of these that are installed. One here, a second one back here, a third one here, and a fourth one here. Those outlets along with the overhead light that's right here are all on the same 20 amp breaker that's in this box. So all of that is one 20 amp breaker. And all I do is I use that for things like, you can see I've got this Alexa device that's connected here to listen to music, things like that when I'm out here working in the shed. I actually installed these little outlet covers which gives me multiple options for additional power surge protection plus USB. And I put that on all of these across the wall here. And the other thing I use this for is when I'm doing cleaning, when I'm cleaning out rigs, and then also for measuring wattage at the wall. So for now, what I've been doing is just measuring everything off of this 110 volt, and I do it on this solo test rig that's right here. So that's the reason I get the readings off of this when it's connected, is because I can run this over here in a 110 volt and then get readings off of this rig right here. Now, let me cover the 220 volt. What I did is we put in four 220 volt outlets. And the first one you can see is right here. And each of these 220 volt outlets is on its own 30 amp circuit. So each one of those 30 amp circuits has its own 30 amp breaker here in the breaker box. So right now we've only got two of the 30 amp circuits being utilized and the one that's being measured right now, this trip light, let's take a look 
we're at 9 amps and 11 amps so right at about 20 amps and each one of those can be pushed to about 24 amps each one of these outlets and trip light PDUs so we want to stay at 80 percent on each of the outlets as well so not only were you at 80 percent for the whole shed but each of the outlets were at 80 percent on each one of those and you know every component that's in here nothing even down to each individual wire power supply nothing even approaches 80 percent and if it does that's definitely a temporary situation so let me talk briefly about the trip light pdu it's got six c19 outlets which are the larger outlets that go with like the larger 220 volt only uh, delta power supply and then it's got 24 c13 outlets on here which is really more than what you need but it's plenty of expansion capability especially for one circuit i mean it's that's an awful lot of connectivity there the pdu is going to have the l630p plug and then the outlet if you're talking to an electrician it's an l630r receptacle that you're going to have installed so that's all the connectivity for all of the outlets that are here in the shed like I said, we're a little over 5,000 watts, so a little over five kilowatts here with 61 GPUs. And the goal had always been to get to somewhere around 100 GPUs. That means, I mean, really max, we're probably gonna push about 10 kilowatts out of the shed here at any given point before I've gotta upgrade to someplace else. And then last thing I wanted to talk about was this Emporia View. I mentioned this a few videos back when talking about the shed. I did get this installed. Some buddies came over and we got this all connected up here in the box. And I thought that would be a pretty easy install. And as it turns out, it wasn't quite as easy as I thought. And I will show you what that looks like again here. But basically, each of the circuits that's run, so every outlet here in the shed, has a clamp that comes inside the Emporia View that connects to or clamps onto the wiring that goes into each of those breakers. And it's got plenty that go with it. So what's nice about that is every single one of these outlets with this Emporia View, I can monitor exactly what's going on. And I'll do a separate video on this because there's several things I wanna talk about. Uh, it's really simple. It's a great way to get a snapshot on exactly what's happening at the wall, if you will, for each of the outlets. But, there's a couple minor hiccups that I'm still trying to work through. If you've used this or something like the Sense, put that in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your feedback is and how it went for you, but I'm really happy with it being installed. It gives me an idea of exactly what's happening. So we've got metering that's going on at the PDU here, and then we've got also metering that's going on in the app. The last thing I did wanna cover was pricing. So for the electrical here in the shed, the bid that I went with was $4,100, which did not include the trenching and it did not include the pricing from the power company itself. So it was 500 was the quote from the power company that put us at 4,600 and then I did the trenching myself. About 4,600 for all of the electrical, everything that you see here in the shed um, as far as the infrastructure goes. And I'll tell you right now, with the recent increase in crypto prices and having mine for so long, uh, it's a good news story. Everything is paid off. All of the electrical is paid off. Uh, all of it has ROI'd, which is just an amazing feeling. It's awesome. And I'll cover the shed. I'll cover all of the rigs, all of that in separate videos. But uh, yeah, the infrastructure is taken care of. It's all paid for. And we're, we're just ready to expand at this point. So I think that's it. I think I'll wrap up there. Um, if there's any questions or comments, do let me know. Put it in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video, Raptors. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.